Hi, it's Anne. Thanks for stopping by. So I'm going to start with an apology to people who are still in um, uh, parts of the world, parts of the U.S. where um, where it's a uh, uh, cold and too uh, too chilly to work outside yet. Because here in the Pacific Northwest, it's getting really nice and uh, nice consistently. So um, anyway, I've been out planting things in my garden. And what does that give me? That gives me a lot of these these plastic markers. Uh, we all, if, we, if any of us do plantings uh, in the spring, you know, you just collect a lot of these and you, you hold on to them because you think, oh, I need all of this information. But a lot of times if it's something that you plant repeatedly, you're, you're familiar with, uh, with the instructions on this particular plant. So this is, you know, this is a, a form of packaging and I'm glad that the stores, um, uh, provide these, but it's a lot of plastic. And I thought, you know what, in my vow this year to be, uh, uh to be a better gardener, I, uh, I thought, you know what, I need a notebook. I don't need so much a garden journal as I need a notebook to keep track of things and, and to kind of remind myself what I'm doing. And, uh, uh, I guess maybe there's not a whole lot of difference between a journal and a notebook, but a notebook to me seems a little more uh, a little more utility. I'm more likely to uh, just to jot down weird lists of things uh, rather than uh, including fully composed sentences like I might do uh, in a, in a diary type journal. So anyway, I'm going to be using the term notebook for what I'm going to make today, but I want to use these little plastic markers. I might not be able to use all of them, and I know I'll be collecting more of them as I continue to add plants. Uh, I'll be adding seed packets uh, to my list, <laughs> my, my collection of um, garden paper waste uh, as well. So I think I'm going to be using those in the future. But what I have done, um, let me just set these aside. I thought in making this book that I, I, I want to use these in, um, I, I loved this. This was part of my George, um, uh, the, the, animal husbandry books that my friend Marilyn came uh, or gave to me from her father, her late father-in-law, George. I liked the sheep science thing here because it looked kind of agriculturally, uh, agriculture-y. And I thought, what if I covered, if I kept that spine, but if I put a piece of, um, corrugated cardboard over that. That might be nice. But then I started thinking, you know, no, this book, I'm not certain that I would have this book out with me on the patio with lots of watering cans and spray and dew and, and such around. So I'm going to save this for another project. And I just went ahead and made another Amazon packaging journal. Um, I did some stitching, uh, leaf stitching around the end, uh, the edges to kind of give that a garden flair. And I filled it with a signature, the same kind that I made the other day using that fra Franken paper technique where I just glued oddball sheets of paper end to end, made a long scroll, a long snippet roll, and then cut it using my template, my little chipboard template and this was the same one that I used the other day I just cut it down to fit this uh, this journal I love this technique I'll link it below if <coughs> excuse me if you've missed it but I just love the way that the pages end up looking um with uh, you know with these things sort of pieced together very much in a utility sort of way I used a lot of junk mail I used um the insides of of more um Aunt Brown Amazon packaging, uh, I, more junk mail. Uh, this was the, the back. You can see this is the front of a junk mail uh, piece. And I covered uh, a bunch of printing that was on this particular piece. And then on the back side, I glued this. So this is a little pocket here. Anyway, this is this is wrapping paper uh, that's very famous in my family. We have, we have a huge, huge roll of this uh, wrapping paper. And this is probably the only wrapping paper anybody who gets a wrapped gift from us uh, will ever see uh, from now until the end of our lives. Um, more junk mail. Anyway, uh, I've put together the signature for this. And what I thought I would do is to see how a topper using some of these, maybe the smaller ones, 
of these plant markers might work. So um, let me set this aside. The other thing um, we're going to get to a little bit later in this video is you're going to see the return of the weathergrams. Do you remember the weathergrams from the 1st of February? Uh, those little dangly quotes um, that I um, uh, I hung outside. Anyway, we're going to get to that in, in, a, in a minute. But they have spent their three months out in the garden and they are now going to have a place. In um, it occurred to me they might be perfect in this um, in this gardening notebook. Anyway, let's set this guy aside. And this is just an ordinary piece of uh, corrugated cardboard. I ran it through my um, embossing machine so I could smash it down because I didn't want those flutes sticking up really, really high. They're still sticking up a little bit, but uh, I wanted it a little bit flatter so that it would be easier to adhere things to. So that smashed it down. If you don't have an embossing machine to smash it down, you know, do you have a, you know, rolling pin or a wine bottle or, you know, your bottle a bottle of glue, anything round, a, a, a juice glass, anything, you can moisten this and roll it down and smash down that corrugated cardboard and you still have a lot of nice texture. I rubbed a little bit of gesso on the outside and um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to ink it a little bit more as I'm thinking. I'll do the Gail Augustinelli technique of ink and think because I want this kind of grungy. So it sort of has kind of the look of a of an old garden shed. I'm really eager to get this thing done because I've planted a lot of plants, but I've got I have more that I want to do this afternoon. And um, I also want to plant a bunch of seeds. I picked up some potting soil today, and I have a lot of empty pots from the, the plants that I've put into my my big patio pots already so I can get a few seedlings started. Um, as you can see, I do I do mostly ornamentals in my garden. I do do some herbs because I love culinary herbs. I think the sage is going to be um, is going to be great because we've gotten where we've used sage more and more in our cooking. So we got a couple kinds of sage. Uh, we always use a lot of rosemary, but um, I really don't grow vegetables. I, I um, we have we have other wonderful farmers markets and you know we have a neighborhood CSA which is community supported agriculture a, a, a young woman has a has a, a farm just a, an urban farm like right in our neighborhood and she grows wonderful vegetables and greens and we buy a share in her business every year so what I was thinking of doing was maybe just sort of arranging a few, obviously I'm not gonna use all of all of them in the cover because that would be way, way too much. But I think I want one, um, you know, pull this down a little bit. I want one dominant image here and kind of put some of the smaller tags around it. That's a little, I don't think I want that white. Maybe this pink. I think I'd probably want, to, want an odd number. That might be, that might be enough. And what I was thinking, I have a little bin of materials over here. I thought I would just use this little label. This is from uh, one of Tina's digitals and mount that on another piece of corrugated cardboard that I put some gesso on and I've die cut. So I thought I might have the, I think something like that might work okay. Let me just sort of gently put it here to see how I like that arrangement. Yeah, I want to put a, cut, a little bit of background on these things to make the, the brown paper pop a little bit more, but I think I'm going to start with an arrangement like this. Let me let me just try. I, I love the red in this hot lip salvia and I love hot lip salvia. It is a perennial, so it's not something I plant every year, obviously, but um, it's so wonderful for drawing the birds in. I had two big hot lip salvia shrubs in my garden that we lost over the winter. We got that terrible cold snap and it was it was one of the casualties. So I went out and bought two brand new ones. Um, 
day before yesterday. Now, I love the garden sage. There's a little bit of rosemary. Nope, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go back to the hot lip salvia. And hot lips sounds so sassy, doesn't it? Yeah, let's just begin. Um, I could I, I could cut this off, but do you know, I kind of want the whole marker. I want it off, I, I want to be upfront and honest about what this is. And this is most definitely one of those garden markers. I just have handfuls of those that I throw away every year, at least every year that I plant things. Some years I don't plant that much. And where is it? Something I can use for a gluing surface. Guess this will work. All right, we're gonna hope that the Fabrifix works for this because this is a plastic surface. Here I'm, <laughs> I'm wanting to use up this plastic and I'm using, you know, more of a, a polymer type material to use it up, but you know, that's okay. I like the idea of not throwing away these little, these little markers and the ones that I don't use on the cover, which will be, you know, most of them will be left over. Hopefully I'll be able to use elsewhere in the journal. I'm not gonna get through to the whole journal today. And in fact, I might not even try to decorate um, that much of, you know, going into, I keep saying journal, keep going into the notebook um, because I might want to be adding decorations along the way. So maybe I'll just sort of take the things I'm sort of collecting and put in an envelope so I can affix those as I work my way through the notebook. I want to do things like, you know, write down you know, the, the phone number of the guy that came to dig out old stumps uh, uh, for us and, uh, you know, the date we put mulch down and things like that. So those are various kinds of lists that I think would be nice. We say this. And we think we said the pink petunias, didn't we? Okay, well, Anne, now don't start overthinking this. I'm very excited about this idea of using these plant markers. We've got Earth Day coming up on April 22nd. I remember when the very first Earth Day came around in the early 70s. I was in high school and uh, we did lots of trash pickup and talking to our parents about environmental issues and there we go. I always enjoy Earth Day every year. And you know, the little bit of, of saving of of waste from the landfill. I mean, it's it's an important practice and we do that in junk journal world all the time, which I love. It's not a substitute for the for the bigger actions we can take and we should always remember that, you know, the way we vote, the way we donate, the way we advocate. Those are the always the big 3 for me. Vote, donate and advocate in whichever way makes sense for you uh, for environmental protection. And uh but these, you know, these smaller actions, these habits of not automatically throwing things away, um, that, can, that can really inform how we do the other things. It can, they, they can be good reminders to us. And I, I think we're all in the same boat here on that. So I'm not gonna be doing any more preaching on that, but uh, you all know where I'm going. Um, I could do an another one down here, I guess, but I don't want to have four. I think I want to stick with the with the three, and I am okay with this kind of like his stripes being horizontal when the rest of these are vertical. 
but I think he might need some grounding. Maybe this, is that too many layers? No, I kind of like that. I do kind of like that. Let me hmm, set this aside. I think this is going to be okay. Um, I also have, I haven't thought about how to do this, but this is a little bit of a ribbon that came off of a center, came off of some center pieces at a luncheon that I was, uh, I was at lately. And that is kind of cute. I also have some die cut leaves. There's a darker one. Those look just a little delicate. Let me let me get this uh, this little medallion put on here first. Maybe if I put that there, that looks like almost like it's coming out of a little pocket. I kind of like that. Kind of like the fact it's not centered. Let's go ahead and go with that. Let's do that. Do you agree? I think I hear you voicing your approval. I'm just off here gluing. Nothing exciting going on over here. I just have kind of a full desk. we go and let's go ahead and get this little notes here if I was really clever I probably would cut off the leaf so that the label wasn't going over anything bumpy but you know what I'm just not gonna I'm just not gonna worry about that because we've got gardening to do I need to be out using this notebook and writing down what I did on this bright and shiny day. The few plants that I have put out already, I'm already enjoying so much. Even just looking outside, you know, my um, my kitchen window as I'm watching uh, washing the dishes, I look out onto a little patio there and see some of our potted plants and. You know, the um, the few things that I've put out already, like the, you know, this this geranium. Uh, I have a, a black coal hod, an old tin coal hod that I actually bought with my mother many years ago. And I always put red geraniums in that because she and I had so much fun visiting that thrift store that day in the mid-90s. And uh, she always loved red geraniums. I, so I, I plant red geraniums, at least a few, every year in honor of my dear mother, who left us in 2001. She lived a, a long and a good life with lots of red geraniums. What do we think of that? Do you think I maybe need a little bit of textile or something? There, I wonder how something like this might might look to kind of fill in this spot. This is just a piece of, uh, it looks like cheesecloth, but it's actually uh, gauze, like you know, like gauze like you, ha you would have in your medicine cabinet. And I always tend to use that instead of cheesecloth because it's easier. <laughs> it's, it's easy to keep, you know, it's a, just a handy roll. Where are my scissors, Anne? What did you do? My gosh, I can't be without my scissors. No. Oh, here they are. Um, the gauze, it's easy just to cut a little bit off and, you know, dunk it in a coffee cup, coffee cup and let it, uh, let it soak up that coffee stain. And you just kind of pull it and it has kind of a, kind of a fishnet utility kind of look. I wouldn't want to put lace. Here, I want something that looks like it's kind of hard working and kind of ratty. Oh, 
I like the different texture there. I like that. I can kind of pull it out of the way. And it's, yeah, it's going to get rattier. It's going to get, you know, weirder looking. And that is going to be okay with me. A little bit of art glitter glue there. Put my stopper back in. Yeah, I have been, as I think I've said before, I've been a very, very substandard gardener over recent years. And um, I just, I feel like I've got my gardening mojo back uh, this year. I just want to, want to get out there and, um, you know, I, I would be overly ambitious if I was trying to plant a bunch of vegetables. And truthfully, we don't have that, you know, that much room. It's mostly a garden where we, you know, sit and enjoy the flowers, sit and have a glass of wine of an evening, let uh, let our grandson run up and down the path and play. He, <laughs> he loves to make potions. He's seven and a half and he'll go and uh, this past week when he was over after school. He said, oh, Grandma, I want to make want to make potions. Let's make an invisibility potion. He gets all of these ideas from Minecraft. And so he, I got him a little, little cottage cheese tub with some water in it. And he went and found various, uh, various leaves and petals of different things that he thought would had, had magical properties. And, and, uh, he was having fun making his potions, but I was just having fun sitting out in the garden. It was coming to life, watching my sweet little fella romp around. Okay, so this is sticking up a little bit because it's shaped, but the part that's actually flat is there. I, 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 I think this is worth just going on with. Now, I think that this needs a little something to make it pop. So I thought, yeah, I had it here. This was the piece of cardstock that I cut this yellow um, circle out with, thinking I would probably use that. And nobody will know that there's a hole in the back of there, so shh. Yeah, that looks sunny. And why don't I round those corners? Because there's no real sharp corners in nature. Should I grunge it up? I say as I begin doing it. Too late now. I guess I could turn it over, but there we go. Yeah, that's going to be nice. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to glue this onto the mat. Uh, then we're going to move on because I once I glue it to the, uh, the notebook itself, I want to place it under a heavy weight. Um, so I want to move on um, to the other topic I wanted to talk about today, which is weather grams. Um, and then the last thing that I'll do is um, come back and put this topper down and put it underneath a weight. Go around the edge there with my art glitter glue. That ought to be fine. There we go. So weather grams, as you might recall from our video back in, in the winter, uh, are little st little pieces of public art. Uh, they're strips of brown paper, like grocery bag paper, that you write something on. Classically, they're supposed to be done with fine calligraphy. I just used a Sharpie. And they're hung out, they're on these little strips, uh, they're hung out somewhere in a public space for three months. And then you bring them back in and whatever state, uh, shape they're in, you can use them uh, in an art project. And so that's what I did. I'm going to set this apart. Um, let's, 
um, yeah, I'm going to switch to the video that I shot where Dan was cutting the weather grams down. This was uh, footage that we took on April 1st, so just about a week ago, and um, you can see how, how the weather grams turned out. Then we're going to come back and we're going to put them in a jar. Okay, Dan is out with the scissors snipping the weather grams, and there are the three that survived. They're all crumpledy, but they're there. Okay, so here they are back in the craft room. It is kind of amazing that they're, they're still in really good shape. I kind of truthfully was hoping they might be a little more dissolved, but uh, uh, it does show you that uh, brown paper, um, uh, brown grocery paper is, uh, is pretty tough stuff. Uh, I love the fact that only three survived. I love the fact that the fourth one is out somewhere. And yes, it is, many would look at it as, as trash, but if somebody finds it or catches a glimpse of it, they're gonna see that there's something written on it. I just can't help but feel that even though it's gonna end up, you know, hopefully somebody will pick it up as trash and, and throw it away, but it's gonna have made its mark out there. These three that remain, let's see what uh, what we can do with them. I was thinking that one of these would make a really fine pocket uh, that I can use in this notebook. And I want it on a fairly sturdy page. So some pages are, yeah, maybe this one. That might be kind of nice. Yeah. Um, what did I do with the string? I have them over here. That's the actual string that was was cut. I think I'm gonna save that one for another purpose because I think I'd like to do a bookmark with another one. But let's go ahead and reinsert this string. The only thing that I did uh, with these weather grams after I brought them back in is I put a very thin coat of Mod Podge on them just to kind of give them a slicker surface. I didn't want to alter the appearance of them. I didn't want to age them even more because they didn't really get all that aged other than just being really wrinkly. You know, we had a um, our typical rainy, rainy spring. Uh, so they did get, they did get wrinkly, but uh, I'm gonna glue this down so that won't catch. But I didn't want to do any acceleration of the aging process. I wanted to leave these really kind of natural. I think this is going to be a nice little pocket. And I think art glitter glue is going to do okay here. And I love the message here. That resistance and change often begin in art. And we have art in this notebook. And we have art in our gardens themselves, don't we? There. Dan and I volunteer in our grandson's elementary school library every week. And um, of course, Ursula Le Guin has, has written quite a few children's books, including a very famous one called Cat Wings, with wonderful illustrations, but the text is all Ursula's. She's the author. And a little girl <laughs> was checking out Cat Wings the other day, and I said, oh, that's by Ursula Le Guin. She's from Portland. She's a wonderful activist, and she believed this, and she believed that. And the little girl at first was, like, really excited to be learning more about the author, but um, I perhaps carried on a, a little too a little too long and she kind of got the look on her face like, oh, okay, Mrs. Kenlin, um, yeah, I think uh, that's all I need to know. Um, intolerable uncertainty. What if we made this one into, um, into a bookmark? And the third one, I don't really know what I wanna do yet, but I was thinking before that this one as a bookmark might be nice. So let's see, I cut this, I think that's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be pretty close there. 
yeah, I'm gonna use that. And what glue shall I use? So many choices. This little, it's just like a little mailing flyer. I hate to call it junk mail because it's from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, but uh, well, my husband is a member. We do like birds in this house. But it was an advertisement. It was a marketing piece, so... Anyway, we send in our membership fees, and then we save, then we save the mailers. Oh, I didn't get the glue all the way down there, did I? There we go. used the wrong one. I was going to use this one about uncertainty for the bookmark, and I used this one instead. That's okay. Love always being made new. That reminds us to continue to invest in all of our loving relationships. There we go. And if this is a bookmark... What do I have to back it with? Because it could be a little tag as well. I'm going to use this. Yeah, I really had fun looking at these weather grams all through February, March. Uh, yeah, February, March, and April. Did I leave them out? Huh. I think I brought them in too soon. I did the math wrong. Oh, well. Too late now. Yeah, I should have brought them in on the end of April instead of April 1st. Well, maybe that just means I'll do the... I was so excited to bring them in and uh, use them in a craft project. I shortchanged their time in the in the um, garden. Well, guess what? Weather Grand Police are not going to come and call me out on it. There we go. I would not have seen a whole lot of extra weathering. I'm quite sure even if they had been out a full three months. I can't believe I did that. I had April in my mind, and somehow it turned into April 1st instead of April 30th. So, well. There we go. I'm going to... Nope, I was normally I round the corners of of a tag, but I am, I'm going to do just the bare minimum of rounding there. There we go, and I'll get out my punch. which I keep right under my desk in case you wonder why it's always seems to be hanging around here. Trim off that little bit of excess. And here's some of this string that was hanging in my Fotinia shrub. Oh, 
Looks like there's just a little bit of extra there. This is going to make me think of Ursula and this project that I miscalculated the timing on. <laughs> An extra month can mean a lot, you know, a lot of context, but I don't think it would have made a whole lot of difference in this one. Okay, so there is our pocket. Here's our bookmark because for this notebook, I'm going to want to be keeping track of where I am. And I'm just going to slide that right into this little pocket. There we go. Oh, and we even get most of Ursula's name there peeking through there. Very nice. Now let's come back to this guy and we're going to glue it in place. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. I have so many different kinds of embellishments that can go into this um, into this journal. And I think I'm, maybe I'm just gonna put all of these, you know, this is from the back of a greeting card envelope. This is from a, a I think this was from an Arbor Day uh, flyer, uh, you know, another, you know, some sort of Save the Butterflies uh, flyer. I think I'm gonna put these all like in an envelope and just tuck that inside. I have a few little decorations. Uh, in there, I have one of my little seed packets here that I just glued in, and and um, I have more of those. Um, a couple of those seed packets. These will go in there somewhere, I'm sure. Um, and I have more of more of the plant markers that I know will go in here. So I'm not going to worry about overly decorating these. I'll just keep those together. And as I complete the notebook and I've got a little uh, bit of space here and there, I'll add one of those in. I think that's going to be my strategy for the decorating of this notebook. Oh, we're looking at its, its little secret back here. Missing paper. That's not a secret at all. That's just making good use of your paper, I think. Am I getting low on this Fabra, Fabrifix bottle? Wait, is this Fabrifix or Fabri-Tac? This is Fabrifix. Not that there's any difference in the composition at all. That's a constant question among junk journals, junk journalers about what's the difference between Fabrifix, Fabri-Tac, and Beacon 3-in-1 glue? And the answer is none. They just market different things in different ways. Well, not, they, they market the same thing in different ways, I should say. Um, I think it has to do with their various distribution channels. But generally, it's something I think we junk journalers need not worry about as long as you get for these hard to adhere things, as long as you get either Fabrifix, Fabri-Tac, or Beacon 3-in-1 glue, because see, it's all made by Beacon, it all works. Okay, I have this going the right way. Yes, I do. Oh, I can't believe I brought those Weathergrams in a month early. There we go. There is my gardening notebook with these wonderful cobbled together Franken pages. That's exactly what I want to see when I'm looking in there. This is some paper that I dyed. Uh, on my back porch. If you'd like to see how I dyed that, I'm gonna be doing some more soon. I'll show it to you. Let me know if you'd like to see this dyeing process. I used, of all things, leftover dye from my grandson's tie-dye tie t-shirt project that we did, I don't know, a couple of summers ago. Okay, this is in place, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the heaviest book I own, which is the Library of Health. A huge one I got from a friend who had it in her garage. It didn't smell musty, so there we go. 
I'm going to let that sit and uh, I'm going to go out in the garden. And I hope that if you have little things like this that you think about using in your, um, in your junk journals, in your notebooks, use them. Thanks, guys. See you soon.